straight up sociopaths planning their next move. Oh, the caption. Let's go. Yes, let's go. I'm gonna be famous, dude. A sense of morality. They don't know what good or bad is. They don't know when to stop. They enjoy manipulating people and fucking with people and hurting people. They think they're better than everybody and everybody is just a pawn in their chess game. It's really dark. I, I, mean, I don't know much about that, but that sounds pretty, like, heavy. It's, it's insane. <laughs> like, it's very, very scary. There are what most people call We all go a little mad sometimes. This was a horrible lapse of judgment. How crazy can you go with these videos? I've been wanting to do some type of video about the idea that YouTubers have to have some kind of personality disorder or something, right, to do what we do. Putting ourselves on camera all the time. Oh, I was gonna ask for hot sauce. Oh, shoot. You're gonna start showing in a couple months. I got my favorite sauce, honey mustard. Yum! Being so open on camera all the time. And that's what sucks the most about it. Having conventions with our name in it. Like, there has to be something. And I want to know, like, the psychology of a YouTuber. Oh my God. Even for me, like, why do I want to get so deep with people and talk to people and, like, try to help them and fix them? Why do I want to cry with them? Why? Like, what is that? I'm sure that that's a disorder. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, you're new into the YouTube world. Like, do you think to be a YouTuber, you have to have, like, something off? The dead body thing was... Yeah, bad. Oh my god, he's hanging. Bro. But to me, the weirdest part of it was when he was talking about it in the video and talking about suicide, suicide prevention. There was like a really loud, sad song playing the whole time. It was like, uh, like I said earlier, suicide, mental illnesses, depression. To me, it was like, oh, this is sad. I'll put a sad song. Mm -hmm. So, not saying he's a sociopath, but like that's something that a sociopath would do, right? Be like, totally. oh, yeah, because that'd be like mimicking behavior. We have to think of like because that would make it feel, it elicit the response maybe he's wanting. Suicide is not the answer. Literally guys, what I preach every day is being a maverick. Like it's okay to be different, it's okay to be unique. In fact, I encourage you to do that. If you're not a part of the low gang, make sure to subscribe. Again, not saying he's necessarily a sociopath, but like yeah. that would be what sad music, I mean we all know even on YouTube and it'll say like sad, it like kind of tells you what the music is. Yeah. Who pick it accordingly. I like to believe people can get better. That's why I do what I do, but I don't know if they can. Could it get dangerous? Definitely. Very much so. 15% of those in prison have antisocial personality disorder or are sociopaths. Yeah, that was a quick reaction that she had. <laughs> that is like, when I was a kid, you know, my mom was going through a lot. And I felt like I had to be strong mm -hmm. because she was like having trouble. So it was always like, oh, Shane's my rock. He's my support system. Oh, he's always strong. Do so you I do like that for other people in your life now too. Are you like a fixer? Yeah. 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 this year, I'm gonna have to go with a cool, smooth, 
No. Because not only did their first CEO and the creator of their company tell me two years ago that they don't give a fuck about you and they just want your money, but last year, their current CEO now told me the same damn thing to my face, VidCon. So no, I won't be going. I won't be promoting their event. I have wanted to tell you this story for two years now, and I can't even begin to explain to you how good this feels, how glad I am that I waited for this conclusion so that I didn't look like a dumbass this year promoting their event for the third time in a row just to show up and be shit on. Fuck you, VidCon. So I guess the last thing I want to leave you guys with is a question. I think all of the rebelled people and all of the unwanted people should host a little meet and greet in Anaheim, California on the same days as VidCon. I'd love to do it. So if you guys want to leave me suggestions of places in Anaheim to throw a free meet and greet below on my birthday at VidCon this year, let me know because I'm going to find a place and I'm going to do it because fuck VidCon and I don't want them to take your money and I would love to meet you guys for free and cause the ruckus for free. Lily just said everyone's fine. There will be no one entering the building unless you have a hotel car. <laughs> so right now I see about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like what how many cup cars do you think that is right there? Are you freaking twenty? Oh my god, there's literally so many. There's probably like 20. More than that. I didn't want anything bad to happen tonight. I have it set at 5200 right now. I love that for us. So I feel like 5200 is a good number. It would be really, really cool to have people like outside waiting to get in. Like people love to be oppressed outside. Yeah. They're just like, I waited in the rain. Like they love that shit. Oh, yeah. I love that shit. Was it even in my mind, City Cure be like, I want bad things to happen to VidCon, whatever. I just wanted to do something different and I wanted it to be good capacity and people inside. I was under the impression that that space was perfectly fine for 5,000 people. I went there, I toured the venue. He had people from Anaheim, Marriott, whatever the fuck, speak to me. They were telling me that that space is fine, that big room and all of the ballrooms and all of the space in between. And I asked him over and over and over and over again. 5,000 people can be in this space, right? There's plenty of space for 5,000 people. We have plenty of security for 5,000 people, right? But what is capacity? The hotel told him to call the room, but obviously like- In like the main ballroom. Oh. I have it set at 5,200 right now. I love that for us. Capacity. So I got a hold of the contract between the Marriott and Good Times. And the contract stated that there was only going to be 1,000 people. I think we're in a good capacity. I mean, we could drop it to 3,000 if we wanted to instead of 5,200. I, I could also, also kind of just like set no capacity and then just be like, okay, we're going to sell it out when we sell it out. I mean, because I feel like there's a chance. Well, I'm going to fight for a fucking bigger, better Tempicon next time. I don't care if it's in 10 fucking arenas, okay? With every belief sport of the United States. It's your mom's real estate money and you have plenty of it and you've scammed them. All your clients are telling. No, no, I didn't say you scammed your parents. I didn't know that. Straight up. I did, and I don't awesome. have any of that money. I mean, we can look he at was it. saying, you know, like, we've sold 4200 but 3000 are free. Do you get and the other girl, too, say, like, she didn't see anybody in the, in line that had a free ticket. Nope. Everybody was VIP. So is, is the free thing just... Bullshit. Scam. We found a scammer who's putting this whole thing on. Yes. Everybody off. The scammer is so pissed at how well I'm scamming her. I'm drunk. We're in a good capacity. I mean, we could drop it to 3000 if we wanted to instead of 5200 I'm but... this... <laughs> I could. What are we gonna? I mean, there was 90 something guards and there was 30. What does it have to do with the fact that people were outside getting sunburns? It would be really, really cool to have people like outside waiting to get in. 
Like, people love to be oppressed outside. Yeah. They're just like, I laid it in the rain. Like, they love that shit. Yeah. I love that shit. This was cut in half. The amount of money spent on security was $60,000. Put that in perspective, the amount of money that VidCon spends on security is one million dollars. This is the big one, capacity. So I got a hold of the contract between the Marriott and Good Times. And the contract stated that there was only going to be 1,000 people. And Michael signed it. Now I talked to both Tana and Michael about this and they both said that yes, the contract might have said a thousand, but everybody at Marriott told them that that was just a safe number and that 5,000 was okay. And here's the final thing, the money. So the amount of ticket sales is roughly $325,000. Now all of that money is currently being held by the ticket company, Veeps. Now Veeps is new and they've never done a convention before. So TanaCon was gonna be their first. And because Michael really wanted to seal the deal, he signed a contract with them saying that if anything went wrong or tickets needed to be refunded, the funds would have to come from good times. And Michael signed that contract. And then Michael explained to me that he is Good Times. Just him. How many, sorry, how many people work at Good Times? So? He wants to make Good Times seem a lot more than it is. In reality, like I just said to you, it is him, his parents, money, and a bunch of interns who are afraid of him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe like 10. Well, if he's but Michael's very quick, like the investor said. Which means that he is personally responsible for finding three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand people. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand people. That fifteen thousand. These fifteen thousand people. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand people. 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 All fifteen thousand of you. I love you. not placing blame on anyone other than myself. I take full blame. In this situation as of right now, even though people are refunded, I am a lone wolf and I have to make everything better by myself because when shit goes bad, people run. <laughs> uh, even though I'm talking about a lot of other people in ways I was illusioned and horrible people, really, and the horrible things that they've done and whatever it may be, I still take full blame. And I trusted a 20 year old idiot who illusioned to me that it would be the best TanaCon in the world. So I thought, so I thought I needed to be in the bathroom and the toilet started overflowing. So we've spent the last hour, and by we, I totally mean like plunging the toilet and it's just, it's definitely broken. I think it's definitely a product of If anything I posted about Malcolm upset you in any way, I am so incredibly sorry. And I know that this video, this scenario, this situation has nothing to do with me. And as soon as this video is out, I will never even allude to making it about me again because that's not what it's about for me. for primetime Emmy Awards. The first result is his own website, which is billboard articles, interviews after interviews after interviews, Forbes articles, IMDb's, verified Twitter, whatever, all this crazy shit. And I feel like most guys on Seeking Arrangements also are like, I own a car dealership in Glendale. Support me, hee hee. And I'm just playing it down as fuck because I'm scared as fuck. And obviously if he like finds out what I do and he like Googles me, he could like see my net worth and then like what if he thinks I'm scamming? What if he thinks I'm doing this for a story time? Which I wasn't. I'm telling the story now because what the fuck? But like going into it, I didn't think it would happen like that, you know? What if he doesn't want to like fuck with me after that? Like whatever. And so then he's like, that's insane. Like tell me all about that lifestyle. So before I start to tell him about my life, he's like, I actually just sued this like Instagram girl because um, her company was like making shirts that look like my band tees that look like the doors in the Ramones so the doors in the Ramones had to like sue this Instagram girl and I'm like oh like who like whatever you know he and he's like oh her name's like Kylie Jenner I 
remember seeing that like on E! News, like Kylie and Kendall Jenner being sued for copyright infringement of man tees and now I'm talking to the man who did that and I'm also like, fuck you! Man, like Kylie didn't even do anything wrong, like how could you do that to her? Gucciest Gucci shoes Ew. I've ever seen in my life. I don't like the fur. What do you mean you don't like the fur? That's classic Gucci. Oh, I love the shoe though. That is. It that. looks like a mustache. No, it's like a slipper and a sneaker. Your two favorite things. Cool, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Shoe. Look at she wants it. <laughs> because she thinks it's a toy. No. That's um. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, I was so excited. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. But at the same time, like, gr I think this is from Target or Walmart. Like, that's, that's, that is me. Literally. And that's me. I think I was banking too much that my audience knew the real me and would understand that, like, oh, this is just whatever. I don't know. And I'm sure, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Mm. Ashley even texted me. She's like, I, I see that there's like a lot of hate. Are you okay? And we were like talking about it. That's when I realized how big it really was. Like I knew it was gonna be big, but then I realized it was really big. This is the this is the tea, okay? This is the real tea. Like last year when I filmed the last sister go shopping video. Oh my god, this is real. I told Ashley to purposely get me something ugly so I could like put it in the thumbnail. I'm being honest, okay? So in the la last year's video, like that was the trend among all of the video, all of those sister shop shopping challenges. Like I just want to be so real and honest with you guys. Yeah.